Mike Marone, my former colleague at Johns Hopkins, who's going to talk about uh, bile duct injury. I don't think anybody wants to talk about how to make a bile duct injury, but uh, Dr. Marone is going to tell us how to best avoid one. So, Mike, thanks for presenting. Thanks, Mark. So I have two disclaimers, one that I have no disclosures, and two that there is absolutely zero video on the internet where somebody's actually demonstrating their own bile duct injury. <laughs> You'll be pleased to know that, or the fear factor is at work. So yikes, um, I have a seven minutes, so I'm going to give you seven lessons. Um, what's the steady state of bile duct injury? What's the rate? Why is lap coli bile duct injury rate higher than at open surgery? Um, video interoperative danger cues, role of interoperative cholangiography, which bile duct injury repair is probably best, um, when, what's the best timing, and what to do when it happens. So first, what's the steady state? In open surgery, most of us came to the conclusion it was about 0.1 to 0.2 percent, but in the laparoscopic era from a whole series of um, large retrospective and prospective studies, the steady state bile duct injury rate remains, even in 2011, at about 0.4 percent. So it will happen, though obviously to none of us who will never submit any video to the internet. Um, so what have we learned in terms of the mechanism of why do we have this steady state injury rate of still about 0.4 percent? Um, well, it has to do with the anatomy and what we do tactically different in terms of operative strategy. If we Think of the normal anatomy of a straight line between the common hepatic duct and common bile duct. We shift that laparoscopically to now a straight line from the cystic duct to the common bile duct. And now the angled structure is the common hepatic duct. And so the, we've shifted the angle of danger or the target of danger to now the common bile duct, which is now a straight line from the gallbladder and the cystic duct, so we can easily get fooled into working a little bit low. And so if we have a resultant injury in this common bile duct, if you do the math or do the anatomy and think this through, you have to have a second injury to take out the gallbladder. You have to actually remove a segment of the biliary tree, and that is part of the reason why the reconstructions are so challenging. But it's important to recognize that, that if you have a single injury, you're probably going to have a second injury. So, Video intraoperative danger cues. First, inflammation, angry anatomy, making the visualization of their critical view challenging. Um, you can see their clips in a lot of random places on this video um, segment, which is from, I used to get to review all of the bile duct injuries for the military, and this is an extract from all of these um, slides or extracts from that series. Um, the next one, where the dissection is too low. Um, either below the liver or the duodenum is in the operative field. If you're below the liver and the duodenum is next to where you're operating, your operative dissection is at risk. The double bump sign, um, where there's a bump at the top, which is the junction of the cystic duct and the gallbladder junction, and the second one where there's inflammation from k -Lotz node creating a second bump, um, where dissection is often starting to work. Where you want to be is at the junction of the gallbladder in the cystic duct junction, where you often are working, is down right on the common duct. Other intraoperative danger cues, atypical anatomy, the unexpected bile leak, the so-called accessory duct, which may well be one of the ductal structures that you're trying to identify, the so-called short cystic duct, which is usually a nomenclature for inadequate dissection, unfolding of the infundibulum from what is really the cystic duct, and you're looking at the common duct coming out from beneath, or an abnormal intraoperative cholangiogram, which is a segue to lesson number four. Data since the initial 1992 NIH laparoscopic cholecystectomy consensus panel forward have never really proven that routine intraoperative cholangiography is safer, but it has demonstrated that intraoperative cholangiography can help when biliary anatomy is unclear. Lesson number five, which bile duct injury repair is probably best? Uh, from Stewart and Way's work back in 95, which is an early review of 88 of their early major bile duct injuries that they had the opportunity to repair, um, they went through several bits of analysis, but the key points were that the Roux and Y hepaticojejunostomy was probably the most successful and that referral to a tertiary care center 
was key in looking at long-term best practice outcomes. If you expand on that in terms of timing, um, as well as folding in which bioduct engine repair um, is best, look at more contemporary literature. Um, this is a second of a series of articles that came out of Hopkins. Um, the first look was in Annals of Surgery in um, 1997, and then this is a follow-up with 200 patients in 2005 in Annals of Surgery. And basically looking at the different procedures, um, again, the winner was ruin y hepatico-jejunostomy. And if you look now to question number six, what is best timing for bioduct injury repair, um, regardless of timing of the operation of their presenting symptoms, history of prior repair, none of these factors influence the most common postoperative complication rates, nor their length of stay. So to further amplify the answer to the question, what is best timing of bile duct injury, even a more contemporary study just published in archives um, last year looked at a series of 69 patients, and their conclusions were that the repairs in the intermediate period um, were associated with increased rate of biliary stricture, and that repairs should be undertaken either early in the intermediate period or delayed greater than six weeks. Finally, what to do when it happens. Um, don't panic, control sepsis, control drainage of the abscess or any collections, control the biliary leak, and refer to a tertiary center for early or late repair, not intermediate timing. So the lessons learned in seven minutes. Number one, bioduct injury incidence remains at a steady state at about 0.4%. Number two, prevention is key. Remember the video, key cues to danger. Um, they can help you stay out of trouble before you get into it. Number three, best outcomes favor early referral to a tertiary center. Perioperative bile duct injury repair complications are frequent, but most often can be managed non-operatively. The best bile duct injury repair is, favors a Roux-en-Y hepatico-jejunostomy. The level of injury, the clinical presentation, prior repair, length of stenting do not influence surgical repair outcomes. The best bile duct injury repair timing is either early or late. Surgical bile duct injury reconstructions can result in greater than 90% success rates that are durable at five years. Again, at the time it occurs, don't panic, control sepsis, control leak, drain, and refer early. Thank you. I think I'm within seven minutes. Thank <laughs> you.